All right, it is chopping it up with Kadar. We are back, and of course, the man himself, Coach Roger Kadar, is out the country this week. He's coaching at a clinic down in Panama, so I got the house to myself, and you already know. You see this Roger Kadar and Perry White, and I'm joined with two special guests today, my boy, Anthony Graham Jr., as we call him, AJ, and then Miss Runner Gray. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people who's going to be watching this know that familiar face right there. Uh, Ms. Gray now has Run a Great Communication. She is a marketing and public relations specialist. Also, you wrote you write books as well. I, do, I was I with you. Uh, you did a children's book as well as right. you've done like a, a true crime. A true crime. And so uh, let's jump right into it because you are a special guest today. And I want to talk to you about your time at LSU uh, and, and to see that realm of what college athletics has turned into today because I look in the past and now you 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 put in all the networks you talk about the social media aspect and you worked in communications at LSU or right. were uh, associate athletic director talk about first of all how did you get started in that role we're really gonna roll back the clock now aren't we <laughs> y'all are gonna make me feel very old talking about this but I was hired to really develop uh, the marketing department and the marketing program for LSU. And LSU was really a leader nationally in really getting into corporate sponsorships and companies. I know you young guys can't even believe this, but it was kind of sacrosanct, you know, college sports. They didn't want all this commercialization really? back, back then. And our athletic director at the time, Joe Dean, uh, at LSU had been uh, vice president of Converse Shoe Company and he went around the country signing Dr. J and Chris Everett and all these sports figures to shoe contracts. That was the extent of really how athletes got involved. They had a shoe contract. You're probably old enough to remember that being a big deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that still yeah. is somewhat. I'm not that young. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm young, but I'm not that young. Well, I, I definitely re can recall. He was a pioneer in that. And then he got hired to be athletic director at LSU. And he said, look, we got to make more money. We got to bring uh, corporate dollars into college sports. We got to find a way to do it. And so he started uh, kind of kicking this around. And then when I was hired, it was actually before 2000 when mm -hmm. I was hired. Um, we developed uh, a corporate sponsorship. We started doing more promotions. We started looking at minor league baseball, which was the king of promotions back then, uh, and how we could build our attendance and bring mainly bring more money in to the program so we could you know have a top-ranked program. And I think that's interesting because – when you look at it, you think about athletics, and I tell a lot of people today, even when you look at athletics, I don't think a lot of people truly understand the nature of the beast of how athletics work. And when you said a guy who was formerly, you know, over Converse, the business mindset that you have to come in, because I think a lot of time people just think you have to know sports. You got to be That's so right. ingrained into athletics. You had to have previously coached or played or you had to be entrenched in it in some type of way. But the business aspect of being an athletic director and being in athletics goes so far beyond the sports realm to where when you're watching the game and you're seeing the coaches, you kind of think that is the entire realm. But there's so many more components to it. And talk about how you got started in it and then the growth and development of your position. Sure, Perry, you make a really good point there. Um, so I was hired. I was doing marketing. That's kind of what I came out of LSU doing. Um, you won marketer of the year, too. Yeah, at LSU. When I was at LSU, yeah. that's right. I was honored by that. Um, so I, I worked in that field. And he was looking for someone to start this program. So someone introduced me to him, and he kind of told me what his vision was there, and it sounded good to me. I was a lot younger then, obviously. You ain't got to so keep telling us that now. <laughs> Come on, man. you ain't got to keep doing it. <laughs> so I, as I used to tell people at the games, uh, my departments were involved in everything that doesn't have to do with the sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, if it's on the field, that's not us. Uh, we have to do with the marketing, the promotions of games, the radio network, the television, coaches shows, which you're very familiar with, all of that, uh, ticket sales, uh, game management, making sure the ticket takers and all those people were in place. 
So I had my hand on everything that didn't have to do with whether we won or lost. Mm -hmm. I left that to the coaches. But you're right. Um, so I got involved in that, and I started off as marketing director. We built this sponsorship program, and it just grew from there. And I gradually got other departments. You know, our, our business-minded athletic director said, well, uh, not only corporate sponsorships bring in money, but our lifeblood is ticket sales, and you're the marketing person, so the ticket office should go under your department. And so I started working with them, and how do we develop new ticket packages, all these things that are now, you think, well, yeah, you know, mini packages and individual games and how you price them. But somebody has to figure all that out. And then we were just starting to build a social media network and online ticketing. And so I was there in that whole transition to what you do now when you take for granted when you go to a, to a game. So it was very interesting time. What was communication like? Because I think now we're so used to this phone. Everything, you could just do this. If you want to buy your ticket, go on your phone. If you want to look at your email, go to your phone. If you just want to do all of these things on the phone. But then I right. can imagine there was a lot more emails were around. Yes. Uh, but you had to be kind of fortunate enough to have that <laughs> internet, to have some type of high speed. Because uh, I can remember you had the AOL. You That's had to right. get. <laughs> But dial you know, up, dial, dial up. up. But a lot of it had to do with uh, more so hands on. I yes. can pretty much assume phone calls, a lot of letter writing, a lot of phone calls, letters, especially with people wanting to transfer tickets and things. But here's the there's the funny thing that we don't have anymore. People used to camp out for tickets when they go on sale. Yes. So that's the thing that we transitioned to doing away with because we people would come line up so. The baseball team gets in a tournament, and it's a quick turnaround, and ticket sales are going, tickets are going on sale, you know, the next morning or something. They'd come the night before and in their sleeping bags and line up outside the athletic department, and the next morning we'd get there early, and I had to get everybody ready. We'd open the doors. The line would be, you know, It's blocks. like a Black Friday, yeah. Christmas sale. <laughs> and now Black Friday's online pretty much. You it can, is. You can do everything online. So that was the thing we felt a lot of pressure about, not putting fans through that experience. You know, you should, there should be an easier way. So we started moving to all of these relatively new. Uh, Ticketmaster was certainly uh, available then, but nothing like it is now. Uh, so these programs like Pacquiolan is a big ticketing program. We started looking around for how do we stop this from happening how do you get your tickets without having to come sleep the night before and in typical louisiana and baton rouge fashion you know they're tailgating and cooking out and all that it just turned into a whole it party just to get some tickets <laughs> and then we're like well, you shouldn't have to you come do that for the game but you shouldn't have to do this just to get tickets so ticketing was changing dramatically uh you know um security was changing dr dramatically I was there when 9-11 happened, mm. and the first game back there in Tiger Stadium was very tense and, and very security. We spent a lot of time on security because we were, you know, everybody was just shocked by what happened and who would be the next target. And certainly a stadium with almost 100,000 people, it wasn't quite as big as it is now, would be a target. Mm -hmm. Certainly nationally they felt like, Baton Rouge could be a target because of um, the oil corridor that's mm -hmm. here and how that could cripple. Baton Rouge does a lot of security planning that, that uh, residents should feel good about because we have these oil refineries, and they know that the nation would take a major hit if, in, if they were ever attacked. So there's a lot of security and cameras and infrastructure around keeping Baton Rouge safe safer than, say, Gainesville, Florida, or, yeah. or another SEC school. So I remember being all out on the field in pregame, that first game back after 9-11, and, of course, we were doing a lot of – the bands were doing a lot of tributes, patriotic things and all, but there was a lot more security and a lot more focus and a lot more planning that went into that. And now that's a part of what you do all the time for every large event that you have. So communications was changing, security was changing, who who gets in and out of stadiums, uh, and and your ticketing was changing, uh, how you receive the game. You know, at that time 
we were bit we had a 50 60 station radio network and that was the big thing so we were moving to streaming um we built the first website when i was there lsusports.net i'm really starting to feel like a pioneer woman now <laughs> you are and that's I why mean, I, I, that's why i wanted yeah, you here I'm today because to feel like one in a covered wagon as i no, about because <laughs> people have to realize for me i love to talk about how we are today and i think because we live in this instant gratification society uh, we live in a society like you know when i was younger i would do something and my mom would say boy you're not doing nothing new we've not already been there and did that you just didn't think you were evolving it but yeah. to know where you at today you got to know where you come from and i think that realm is so integral uh especially when you talk about the realm of athletics today when you look at the business because it is truly a business that has taken off you factor in the nil with it today yeah uh you factor in the huge television contract deals that you're yes. seeing today uh because what you look at between the sec uh now with the big 10 with them bringing in usc and ucla you're talking billions of dollars that are on the table and everybody's trying to sit at the table it's to the point to where it is altering conference it is altering conferences as well as college athletics as we know it. And a lot of people don't understand it. They think it's just about the games being played and the rivalries and the teams, but it's the behind the scenes part of what you're talking about that really makes this go and not so much the games played itself. It's really all about money. I hate to say it, but it's all about money. Well, it's America who, capitalism. Who, yeah. who, you, who you play <laughs> is all about money, yep. uh, you know, because you've got to pay guarantees to teams to get them to come. So you're right, the athletic directors certainly need to know how to hire good coaches, but they better be good business people to run college athletics. It, the NIL is another great example, and it's a dramatic change from the time I was there because we were really protecting athletes' images and uh, making sure people didn't go print things with them. We were all very protective because the NCAA – would punish the athlete mm -hmm. if their image was out there. That's a huge change. One I'm not crazy about, but I understand it. But college sports is uh, money. It's mm -hmm. money for the university. It's money. It's recruiting students because they want to come to schools that have a good, fun, winning sports program. It's paying the best coaches. It's having the best facilities. It's having the best practice facilities. These are tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars that it takes to run these. So that's really what fuels everything. And you talk about being getting that money. I was a part of your job as well as bringing in alums and donors and getting them to buy into uh, what it is that you're trying to build here. Because at the end of the day, uh, it takes money to build that new practice facility. It takes money to to pay the coach where the state says he's he five hundred thousand, right. but we're gonna increase that to two three million dollars. Well, where are we getting this money from? Uh, in all of that aspect, how does that work when you look at getting people to buy into the program? Well, at LSU, we were fortunate to have a nice foundation, a Tiger Athletic Foundation, that really and and your alumni association kind of deals with the donors to the academic side. And of course, getting those donors to the academic side, a big part of it is kind of entertaining them around games and making them feel part of that. But our foundation really handled those just philanthropic donors and people leaving money to you in their will and all that kind of stuff. And I dealt with more of the commercial side of it. So as um, associate AD for marketing and ticket sales and all, I was dealing with the corporate side, bringing the corporations in and giving them exposure through the program, whether they're buying into the radio network. I manage that um, aspect of it. We have rights holders, and they go out and sell all the commercial time in your programming, and you want to get guar large guarantees from those rights holders. So I was on that side of it, um, and then we had a, other staff that handled that donor side of it. But the donor experience, you know, we had to work closely together. The donor experience is an important aspect of it. Um, so that's that's kind of how we handled it. Some schools, you know, they're they're even closer together. I'm sure things have changed a lot since I left there. But um, 
it's it's all about the money. It's well, you guys kind of on the uh, <laughs> on the forefront of things to where it was a model that other schools wanted to come in and see. Well, how are you being able to be successful and grow? Because clearly it has grown starting with you because LSU expanded its stadium. So that means the interest for what was going on there began to grow and more people want to be a part of it. Clearly the interest there because now in Baton Rouge, every radio station pretty much talks about LSU sports. 24 right. 7 right. you cannot turn out to me is oversaturated because yeah. everybody wants a piece of the, the the pie in order to say we're covering it as well so to watch that grow was that kind of a uh a blueprint that other schools begin to say you know what we're watching what you're doing Ms. Ronna gray and what how lsu's growing we want to try to learn what it is that you guys are doing that's a great question and a lot of my time was spent on just that mm -hmm. um first starting with southern university uh, our sponsors would come and our program and i give joe dean credit because he came out of this national sports corporate world so he knew he knew it, and he knew no other school was doing it so he started it he brought me in to build build this uh, vision that he had and then our sponsors would come and say well we want to do for southern university too and southern you know is a little behind you in building this <laughs> sports program so that was our number one let's help southern build their marketing program and i spent a lot of time with marketing directors out there and introducing them to our corporate sponsors because if you're a large national bank, you come into Baton Rouge, you want both schools. Yep. So I'd share with them what we were talking about and how to factor their attendance. And that's what people want, how many eyeballs are seeing their messages, just like in an advertising buy, they'd buy on television. And so I'd, we would help them with that. Uh, that was number one. Then I met several times a year, say three, four times a year, with Southeastern Conference, because then that's our next brothers and sisters in arms, you know, that we want to share with other Southeastern Conference marketing people what we're doing. And they started popping up. A Florida pops up. Arkansas had a similar business-minded uh, athletic director, wanted to learn. We, um, I laugh watching uh, Thanksgiving weekend, The Boot, Mm -hmm. The Battle of the Boot oh, yeah. between LSU and Arkansas. <laughs> I, I flew to Little Rock with, at the time, Lieutenant Governor Kathleen Blanco. Mm -hmm. uh, Governor Foster, Mike Foster, was governor at the time, and he didn't like to leave Louisiana for anything. So when we, wanted, <laughs> we wanted to have a press conference with the governor of Arkansas and the governor of Louisiana and initiate the boot. He was like, Kathleen Blanco could go, you know, he was not going. So Greg LaFleur and I flew up there with her. And even though she was a big ULL supporter mm -hmm. because of her husband and her involvement there, there she was in her purple suit and her gold accessories, uh, really flying the flag. And we kicked off the boot and the, uh, a former football player from Arkansas, David Basil, David, Basel. <laughs> David yeah. designed the boot. He's a character, isn't he? <laughs> He's wonderful. <laughs> He's wonderful. But the first thing we say is we, even the players couldn't hardly pick up the boot and carry it around. So, you know, you picture something that you can hoist in the air and do the victory lap when you win. <laughs> watch when we win this watch, go back and watch the footage. Here's a couple of players. Yeah, it's, it's 175 pounds. Is that how heavy? Mm -hmm. It's it's a beast. And so that was great though. And I look forward to seeing that every year. And I'm like, we better win the boot. We better not have that, <laughs> we better not have that boot sitting up in Arkansas as much as David would like that. We better not. But yeah, a lot a lot of um, traditions I think got started in that that period of time. And I want to bring it around because of course you and I have had the conversation before talking about Deion Sanders and what he did for Jackson state. And I think especially from the, the aspect of what you said all the way up into this point, the communication, the PR side, you can't do nothing, especially if you come from that world to smile, to see the type of uh, when you put a value. And I don't think you really can put a value in terms of what he was bringing. When you look at the social media presence, right. uh, good morning, America college yes. game day. Yes. Uh, it just all the eyes and the exposure and one of the things right now it's kind of getting a little backlash from it because you got some people that say well 
a guy like Dion and all the success that he had in life maybe should have dedicated himself and his life mission maybe a little bit more towards Jackson State considering it's an HBCU. We know HBCUs uh, historically have been underfunded when you talk about state dollars, but as well as don't quite seem to get the support from its alums uh, that you would get maybe at a LSU or right. around the SEC when you talk about people wanting to give back. And I've always said, and, and, and AJ and I have always had this conversation, I think one of the bigger things is it comes to the realm of which you were right there in. It comes from a lack of communication in terms of telling who you are, uh, what you are, what you're doing, and where you're going. And you have to put those together because people want to be updated. They want to know. And I think a lot of times we don't do a great job when you look at the HBCU community uh, in terms of trying to do that to build up that network. And so when you look at what Coach Deion Sanders was doing at Jackson State, he was able to do it with a lot of support in a short time. He went in and sat at the table with Walmart. Walmart came in and built a new practice facility. And the countless other people and corporations, I've recently saw a video before they played in the championship game, he had the guy that started Under Armour come in, right. speak with the team. So all of these people that you sit down and you talk with, but you said something that resonated. When you get an athletic director, you got to get somebody that's business minded, know how to go out and get coaches. Because in this world of college athletics that we live in today, it's beyond just the wins and the losses when you look at the schedules it's about how you doing business behind doors how you communicating it and how you sitting yourself at, at the table uh to be able to be 10 years ahead instead of just one year at a time right and when you look at what coach sanders was doing and, and i talk about it all the time and you know everybody's saying well maybe Dion should have stayed but he took the job at colorado i said what he has done is opened our eyes to show you how big communication is, no matter what level it is, how big public relation and marketing is, no matter what it is. Now it's our job to learn what that blueprint looks like, take that blueprint, and now build and develop off of it. And when you look at somewhere like Southern being in the same city as LSU, for you personally, and I would love to hear this, what are some ways that you think Southern can grow when you talk about being able to take that blueprint and be able to grow from it? Let me first say to you, I, you know, there's always going to be backlash mm -hmm. when someone does something, but we have to understand everybody's got their own uh, obligation to better themselves for themselves, for their families. And so we should really look at what Deion Sanders, you're right, he opened a door there mm -hmm. and they can walk through it and they can go further. He might also inspire other Deion Sanders to go do, even if they do a, not a long period of time there uh, at an HBCU school and get them going. And so we shouldn't ever resent them for moving on and doing better for themselves. We should just be grateful for what he did and you named it all. And I just watched it, I loved it. I love that everybody at Jackson State became every America's team and yeah. everybody got behind it. Southern has an asset that to me is unrivaled in the country, and that is the Jaguar Nation. And I personally, and this is a 30 year thought I've had in my head, I've said to plenty of people there, uh, you have like Notre Dame, you have a national, the Southern graduates have gone all over the country, uh, but they hold those ties to Southern. And I don't feel like they've ever captured that. Um, they have the ability to go play on the road and bring that Jaguar nation together. And they need somebody like that. Southern needs its own Deion Sanders, I think, to really bring attention to that. What I have been disappointed to see is, you know, I was also, you know, we were the first people getting the logo licensing and getting the rights and all. Southern has struggled in getting that really where it should be. And I used to say to them, they had different people who had gone and licensed different aspects of it. You gotta bring it all together, you gotta keep tight control, and then you go, there's people all over this country that would buy Jaguar Nation merchandise. But the school didn't have, I mean, I don't know how it is now, but the school at the time didn't have the rights to that. Mm -hmm. Someone else had the rights to that. So it's worth the effort to go in, bring all of your people together, and say we've got this asset that we can really capitalize on 
if we come together. Mm-hmm. And LSU, you're always going to have, it's hard to imagine, but even at LSU, you're always going to have, well, the Alumni Association has to raise money, and Tiger Athletic Foundation has to raise money, and the Athletic Department has to raise money, and the Chemistry Department has to raise money. And so it's really important that someone at the top, the president, manages that. Mm-hmm. And you don't let your different people go poach donors from other areas. And so you've got mm. an LSU Foundation, you've got a Tiger Athletic Foundation. They have to work together. I don't think Southern has quite gotten there, and I don't think they've quite captured the value of the asset that they have. And For you, if you look at it from the outside or, and just being in Baton Rouge, what does that value look like for you? Because clearly there's a value when you look at LSU, and you saw that value because you had to then evolve. You said you looked at minor league. It was just so many areas that you said, you know, we got something here, mm-hmm. and we can capture it from every aspect and realize what it is that we have – we can put that, then we can sell that. For Southern, for a lot of people, I don't think they understand. What does that value look like? Well, you have this, um, you you have the ability because Southern graduates and any HBCU university draws students from around the country and then they go live other in other markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, as does LSU. LSU's largest market is probably Houston outside of Louisiana for alumni. So you first have this ability to go play in another market and bring your fans in. You have that, that starts to make you very, I had to put together a program one time back when we weren't doing so well at LSU to sell the peach bowl on taking us. (laughs) And and the the plan was, well, because we're going to bring so many people to Atlanta Mm -hmm. and it's going to be worth it because we're going to, Fill up the stadium. We're going to fill up the hotel. We're going to sell these tickets. At the so time, economic value. Thirty-five, forty thousand dollars or so. So that's the first thing Southern needs to do. They need to say, "Hey, we can bring our fans there," and you've got to have somebody that's that spark that that plans some activities around the game, and it becomes an alumni thing. And you get together and you bring some former players back and some people from Southern that have done great things and helps bring them bring them together because that's what fans like. They like that fan experience. You know, no longer is it enough just to drive and go watch a game. You've got to have everything. you got to sell it because I stay at home and watch That's it. right. You know, that's I got right. the app once again, my phone. <laughs> you got to have all that going around it. So, one, they've got a national fan base that they could convince other markets we bring value. Secondly, that name, that Jaguar Nation name, could be very well marketed through merchandise. There'd be a whole lot of people that want to wear Jaguar Nation things, have Jaguar Nations. And that's a whole industry. You know, we were, at the time, moving LSU to being licensed by a national representative. You know, it was handled over in the vice chancellor's office when I was there. We're like, you know, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all focus on academia, give it to us, and we'll be able to grow it. And so there are companies that just get out there and connect with all the uh, manufacturers of shirts and T-shirts and jerseys and all that. So you've got to get them out there, and it's international. You know, there's an international market for merchandise. So you got to take that brand. You know, everything's about branding. Mm -hmm. Ask the Kardashians. It's all about the brand. (laughs) (laughs) So you got to take that brand, and you've got to go and get it on the right kind of merchandise. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get, look look at Lizzo's uh, video Mm -hmm. with the Southern Band. The Southern Mm -hmm. Band is a huge asset. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. So who's managing the marketing of that? I mean, they're, you know, they're in... Uh, videos that again tens and hundreds of millions of people see Mm -hmm. southern has assets that could bring in more money for them and the more money as Deion sanders showed the more money you have the more likely are you going to improve your facilities you're going to get more people out and you get game day there and then some alumni around the country are going to say they're you know they're doing a pretty good job i need to send a check next time i get that letter that email or something so yeah, Southern's got the assets. Southern Band, Jaguar Nation, great uh, sports program and sports history. So you got the mobile fan base. That's what it takes. One day if I take over, you'll come work with me? When you're athletic director at Southern University, I will come 
sit in my little wheelchair. <laughs> and I'm going I'm to say, y'all take a give her whatever she want. All right. Whatever she want. That's going to be my, you're going to be my right hand. Whatever she wants. I used to laugh and tell the people that all the, all, you know, you run an athletic program on young people. Uh-huh. So even when you're a grown up working there, it's students and interns. And that's really how the athletic departments run. And I used to always tell them, in the ticket office because we'd be struggling to accommodate everybody and anybody that had any we, a, a man on a stretcher who mounted a mirror over his stretcher bed so he could be on the sidelines and watch the game through the mirror oh, wow. yes yes and you're like if it means that much to a fan you know you want to try to accommodate them and i used to say to them now years from now when someone calls up and they say that i I need, you know, assistance or handicapped parking or something. You're going to know this is a fraudulent call. This is a spam <laughs> call because um, I'm, I'm going to be watching it on the on TV and on the app and things like that. But I would go for you. That's what I was going to say. I, even though you'd have to get me a parking space a little bit closer, but oh, I would don't go. Don't worry about it. We'll get you a parking space, and I will have them come pick you up and take you okay. wherever you need to go. Then I'm you, there. You are one of my favorite people. I always enjoy talking <laughs> to you. you. got a beautiful soul, a beautiful spirit. Oh, thank you, uh, And you've always, I like your work ethic. A lot of people don't even think you do a million, trillion. <laughs> t- you, you do a ton of things, and the way that you handle it, I really respect it. And I just like your, your overall genuineness. And, oh, and then more you. so than that, you bring you you a woman of many hats. Yeah. You know, you, you write books, you you deal with the city, you have done athletics, you've worked with the state, you've done so many things and when you get people like that, you have to be able to uh admire those people when you have them because that is a lot of talent that you bring to the table as well as a lot of knowledge that you have that you know, hey, I'm the next generation up. Yeah, I, I want to sit there, and I'm. My mom once told me, "You think you a know it all? Sometimes, period, just shut up and listen." <laughs> I've had to do that and learn that, and so when I get around people who bring so much to the table like yourself, I be quiet and listen because there's so many things that I can learn. And once again, like when we first started, what I think I'm doing now ain't nothing new. Somebody's already done it. Clearly, you've done it, and you've done it the best of your ability, and it has evolved. But you got to know where you come from to know where you're going. And for me, I like to know where things come from to know how to take it and evolve it because I have a mindset that is creative to evolve it and take it to the next level. But I got to understand where it started and how it started. And, you know, and that's why I appreciate you for coming on today. Oh, sure. And uh, I love I, talking I, it's, with y'all. it's always a good conversation when I have you. But I've, I've always been so interested because I don't think you and I have ever had that conversation in terms of the LSU athletic standpoint. Right. We've kind of had like a round beat around the right. bush questions but you know i've always was interested and for me that was good to know and i could sit here and listen to it all day every day but i know you got some well, things we'll to do, do it again right? yeah we will we will and i know you got some things to do today but first of all i want to say thank you for coming on let the people know uh where they can find you if they want to get in touch with you your oh, business and whatever's coming oh, sure. up Sure, like you said ronna gray communications it's r-a-n-n-a-h-g-r-a-y.com ronna gray.com if anybody has questions i'm happy to share this knowledge that I have and experience mainly with anybody. So I, I appreciate it. I love that Perry says he's an entrepreneur because he wears a lot of hats too. <laughs> and whenever something comes up that I don't know what to do, I think, I wonder if Perry does that. <laughs> she does. She gives me a call every time. She says, you know what? I got something. Uh, is this in your area? And, mo- and probably about 95% of the time it is. Yeah. I find a way to get it done. So. That's right. And, uh, and talk, even with your book, promote the book and let people know where they can find your book. Familiar Evil is the true crime book. And um, there's been two national documentaries made on that. It's a true crime case that took place right here in Baton Rouge. And the funny thing is that when you call me about the show, the thing I have after this is there's a Canadian production company that I've got an appointment with today uh, that's looking at doing another documentary on that book, and that's done really well. And now I'm writing a children's book series for kind of middle grade readers with my great nieces and and, uh, just to kind of bring them along in reading and writing, and we've done really well and won some awards with that and go to the Louisiana Book Festival and uh, trying to make sure they like reading because I think there's nothing like reading when you're young to help you go no matter what profession you go into. 
So um, thanks for letting me talk about that, too. Oh, yeah. It's essential because <laughs> when I was a kid, crazy enough, back in the day, we had encyclopedias. I don't know what people yeah. would, But I used to sit down and read the encyclopedia, and I would learn about things in the world that today, all you got to do is get on YouTube or Google and figure it out. That, but that, that encyclopedia was my open door to yes. the world to be able to realize what was out there. So reading is fundamental and is key when you talk about the development yes. of an imagination and, and how you're going to view the world for your future and the knowledge that you going to see that's why your mother thought you were a know-it-all because you were probably dropping all <laughs> kinds of little pearls well, of well, wisdom well you can't tell me the sky blue because now i want to know why is it blue you know yeah you told me it's blue but what is it about it that makes it blue so yeah it was like be quiet boy i so i understood i learned you know so but i want to thank, thank you for coming on this morning we got to get ready it. to take a break and hey stay tuned we'll be right back with more chopping it up with kdar Lottery key or your wide variety of new and you safe. Then look no further than the trusted choice of Africa Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City Baton Road. Trust the expert locksmith at Africa for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are inside. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breath, we're more than a playground. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in that's a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. Have a passion, we've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights, gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. Hey, Coach, Coach Roger, Roger Kador, Kador here. here. There's, There's something in my teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a toll, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner's four generations strong and home road right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time to stay to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in that's a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. All right, we're back with chopping it up with Kadar. My man Roger Kadar is not here today. So you see, I get to sit 
at the big desk like I'm the big man, Roger Kadar. He's out the country working a baseball clinic down in Panama. My man down getting his international travel on. He'll be back next week. But, of course, I'm Perry White. And my man, Anthony Graham Jr., is joining me today, also known as AJ. His wife called him Anthony. She's probably the only few people that call him. Man, look at him smile. Put that camera on. Show that big smile so his wife. Man, glad to be on here, man. <laughs> That's Ant. Me and him graduated. We went to Palm Love High. For all y'all don't know about them zebras, put it on him, man, so he can see that shirt. See, oh, yeah. see I, out here they know about John Curtis and John Curtis I know has won 28 state championships. Give them some information about them zebras, Graham. All right, well right here this we got 23 state championships, two NFL Hall of Famers, uh, the winningest program in the state of Arkansas, uh, over 800 wins. I think currently they're ranked like number 17 or 18 in the nation for all time wins. Yeah, you see, you know that. Did you look at his face? Yeah, you know Like that. this sweater is, oh, this is after they won the 2014 state championship. Then the next year they went back and went undefeated and won the 2015 state championship to make it his 23rd state championship. So a lot of history up there. I know people joke around when I tell them my mascot is the zebra. You don't want like no parts zebra. of that zebra. But I'm telling you right now, man, it's one of the winningest pro, not just football, but athletic programs in the country. That's it. And Graham, you also, you a coach, man. You got that championship ring on your hand, man. Graham out here is a, a offensive coordinator and he's coached around in some high schools here in the Baton Rouge and a 225 area as well. Yes, yeah, I started my coaching career at Baker High School, the Buffaloes. Uh, spent a couple years there, made a couple playoff runs. Uh, then I left there and had the opportunity to go to Catholic High School where I was working under Gabe Fertitta. Uh, had a couple state runner-ups over there, won a state championship there, has had the chance to coach a lot of great players like Emory Jones, who just made SEC freshman All-American at LSU, uh, incoming five-star recruit Shelton Sampson. Uh, I got a couple guys that's all over the country playing some at Army, McNeese, Gramlin, Southern, uh, Arizona State. So now I'm currently the offensive coordinator at White Castle High. Uh, second year there last year, lost in the quarterfinals, and this year we stubbed our toe in the second round. But uh, looking to come back and do some big things next year. This my boy, y'all. I didn't pr kind of persuaded him to move to Baton Rouge some years ago. <laughs> he came down here kicking it so much. I said, man, you might as well move here before I knew we was roommates. So anybody out there looking for a good head coach, I'm telling you, that's your guy. He also, he a good teacher, too. Just finished up your Ph.D. at LSU, right? Yeah, this past, this May, uh, this year, graduated, so I'm Dr. Graham. Let now. me put some respect on his name. <laughs> Dr. Anthony Graham Jr. Excuse me. So he Dr. AJ to me. So, you know, if y'all looking for a good principal, assistant principal, <laughs> uh, biology, what else? Whatever you chemistry, need. Chemistry. Teach it all. Head coach, offensive coordinator. Y'all call my guy, man. That's my boy right there. Graham, well, let's jump right into it since we're talking about football and we're talking about high school football. The high school state championships was played this past weekend. And, man, let's start with the non-select before we go over to the, the select. But Oak Grove versus Homer, excuse me, H-O-M-E-R, Homer. Yeah. But you know about that Oak Grove program. Oak Grove won 17-0. What you think about Oak Grove versus Homer? Uh, Oak Grove, one of the premier small school programs in this state. Uh, they started off kind of slow. They started off kind of slow this year. Uh, I think they lost three of their first four games maybe. But, I mean, a program like that, they built for the long haul. Uh, Homer, which is a team that actually knocked us out in the quarterfinals last year. Mm. They won state and won a last year, non-select. They made it back to the uh, state title game, but Oak Grove, they, was, they got hot at the right time, and they blanked Homer and won 17-0. So, yeah. Old Grove is always a program. You always got to look out for them. Next one, Manning versus Union Parish. Manning getting the victory. Division three, non-select, 35-13. to 13. Man, when you look at Union Parish, they have a running back that is uh, committed to LSU, I believe. But when you look at Manning versus Union Parish, what you see in that matchup in which Manning was able to get it? And this was a game that I was looking forward to. I was there in person. Uh, both two, I mean, they're mirror images. Big physical teams that want to run downhill at you. Uh, the guy you speak of, Trey Holly, committed to LSU. He's the all-time leading rusher in Louisiana. He has over 10,000 rushing yards mm. and, like, over 100 rushing TDs. But Manny, I mean, they got a guy, four-star recruit, Tackett Curtis. He's uh, committed to the University of Southern California, he, but he plays linebacker and quarterback. I mean, this guy was 
big. I mean, he was hard to bring down. And you got to give credit to Manny's offensive line. I mean, they had some big guys for a small school. And they were able to control the line of scrimmage. man. They eat good wherever they from. Yeah, man. <laughs> they, they got a good coach. They got a good program. You can tell strength and conditioning program is top tier. And they was able to control the line of scrimmage. And, I mean, the score was close at halftime. Mm -hmm. But you could just tell as, as the game wore on, that offensive line was just able to kind of start getting a bigger and bigger push. And then on the defensive side, I mean, they had big interior, big linebackers, big D-line. They was able to – you know, kind of keep – I mean, Trey Holly still had over 100 rushing yards and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. But to beat a team like Manny, who also has a good program, one man isn't going to beat them. So now Let's jump over to Division Two: Lutcher versus North DeSoto, man. Lutcher getting the victory, 28-19. to 19. Uh, Lutcher's quarterback had a pretty dang on, can I say, pretty damn good yeah. day uh, yeah. in this state championship. But how about North DeSoto having a, like, Cinderella-type season for them? Well, a lot of people may not know, but uh, North DeSoto was coached by Louisiana coaching legend Dennis Dunn, mm -hmm. who won nine state titles at Evangel mm. between the late 2000, I mean, the, the early 2000s and the late 90s. So he's over there coaching, and I had a chance to meet him at some, you know, coaching clinics around the state. So they're going to be okay. They got great fan support, but Lutcher, another traditional Louisiana power, they just won their ninth state championship, and they had a quarterback, Dwayne. Nicknamed Lunch with mm -hmm. uh, Winfield, he was Mister Everything. He well, had, he ate North DeSoto's lunch, didn't he? he took their lunch money. It, <laughs> he had forty three carries in this game, but he also threw the ball thirty two times. He had thirty two passing attempts. I think he had over a hundred rushing yards. He threw for close to three hundred passing yards. I think like three touchdowns, one interception. I mean, he was literally the running back, the quarterback. He was the punt returner and the free safety. Like, he did it all for Lutcher. Hmm. And I just feel like without him and his efforts, Lutcher's probably not in the dome. Hey, sometimes it takes that one guy. We saw that with Edna Carter this year when that quarterback got hurt. That kind of turned the season for them. We moved to Division One non-select. Uh, Dusterhan versus Rustin. Dusterhan getting the victory 17-10. to 10. Rustin has been one of those teams on the cusp like every year. Semifinal, quarterfinals. They've been right there. Finally getting over the hump, getting into the state championship, taking on a team like Dusterhan, who's been right there. Both of these programs been traditional powers in the state. Dusterhan getting the victory 17-10. to 10. Yeah, Dusterhan, super talented team. I mean, speed all over the field. Uh, they got a handful of Division One guys. Um, have a linebacker. I think he was number fifty-six, making tackles all over. They had a receiver. His last name was Blood. I'm pretty sure he's probably related to Harold Blood, Blood. at Southern Blood. University. It is. That's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was a receiver. You could like when I saw him in pregame on this. I said, Oh yeah, he can run. And he definitely he had a big game. Uh, but Rustin, uh, old school traditional power, kind of fell off. But now the coach they got up there, he's kind of bringing them back. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a good team. They had a pretty young team. So look for Rustin to come back. They're, they're, they're going to be good. They did have a chance. I think they had a receiver drop the wide open post route that would have probably went for a touchdown. And uh, they just fell a little short. But I, before the game, I felt Destrehan probably had a little bit, just a little bit more talent than Rustin. And that's I said the score would have been 17-14. That was my prediction, and the final score was 17-10. Destrehan. So both of these teams, like you said, they've been on the cusp. So Destrehan, they pulled it out. And so yeah. Let's do this. Let's take a break. And we come back. We'll talk about the select division. All right. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be back with more chopping up with Kadar. Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are inside. 
better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. VTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in that's a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. FlyBTR.com. Have a passion? We've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, hey, Coach, Coach Roger, Roger Kador, Kador here. There's, There's something, something about, about teamwork, teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When, when I need a toll, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner's Road four generations Road strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's, There's no, no job too large, large or too small. Call Roadrunner Road Runner for, for quick, reliable, exceptional service. service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in that's a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. All right, we're back with more Chopping It Up with Kadar. My man, Coach Kadar, is out this week dealing with a, a baseball clinic, teaching a clinic down in Panama, doing his humanitarian work. That's why I love working with him. But, of course, I'm Perry White. And my man, Anthony Graham, excuse me, Dr. Anthony Graham Jr. is in this thing. I call him AJ. So, of course, we all know Coach Kadar calls me PJ, which that is not me. I'm Perry White, but I take it because it's him. But that's AJ and, A.J., before we went to break, man, we were talking about the non-select division. Let's jump over to the select division, starting Division Four: Washita Christian versus Vermillion Catholic. Washita Christian getting the victory 28-14. Washita Christian, again, traditional power in this state and on the private school side. A uh, little tidbit, they actually beat a school from Pine Bluff, Arkansas this year called Watson Chapel. Uh, pretty dominated them, but, yeah, I, I knew they were going to win that state championship pretty uh easily. All right, let's move to Division Three. St. St. Charles Catholic versus Dunham. Dunham, the only Baton Rouge school making it to the Dome this year. Normally, you'll see some other teams in there like a Zachary or a, a Catholic, but Dunham being the one that got there this year, St. Charles Catholic getting the victory 32-28 in a hard fall game. Yeah, it was definitely a hard fall game, but St. Charles Catholic, just one of those tough, hard-nosed teams that they're not going to – you're not gonna. Uh, they're not gonna give the game away. They're just gonna sit back and let you beat yourself. Then they're just gonna capitalize on that momentum. And so that's kind of why I pretty much predicted St. Charles would would beat Dunham. Division two select game. This is one that I liked a lot because when you mention these two schools, you know there's gonna be some offense. St. Thomas More, Lafayette Christian Academy, uh, Lafayette Christian Academy, LCA. I like them a lot. There's something about that team when you look at the way that they built the discipline. But of course, St. Thomas More is a team that's been a traditional power. St. Thomas More getting the victory, fifty-two to forty-eight. Man, this was a, a shootout. 
Yeah, if you're a betting man, you definitely should have took the over on this game. But LCA, a school that's probably only been open, I don't even think 10 years, upstart program, tons of talent all over the place. But STM, by far the best pass and offense in this state, maybe one of the tops in the country. They're always going to have a great quarterback. And when you play STM, you know going in, you're going to have to score at a minimum 35 points if you want to win that game. LCA uh, head coach. Huh? Yeah, in two Lafayette yeah. area schools. LCA's coach just recently resigned from his position, looking at other opportunities. So it'll be interesting how that plays out. And then Division One select uh, this one. If you don't know this name, then you don't know high school <laughs> football. John Curtis took on Brother Martin. Brother Martin, one of those teams called a spark in the playoffs. Uh, if you looked at their overall record coming in, I think they were 5-5. Five and five. They were like a 500 team. But it's the beauty of the playoffs. You can catch that spark and find yourself in the dome. But John Curtis, a team man, just pretty much dominated this one, 23 three to zero J jt curtis the man himself what man do you know can has the school named <laughs> after him and then when he's wearing this stuff he basically got his name on his own uh gear so they get the victory 23 to zero jt curtis and john curtis win a 28th state championship yeah i saw this one coming i didn't even stay for this game because when i saw brother martin got in the dome i was like I had seen them a few times. I knew they weren't really that good this year. They just got hot. And I'm not even going to call them by that. I'm going to call them River Ridge because, you know, I'm a Catholic high bear. Oh. I, so I'm, I'm River Ridge. <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. They, <laughs> they, 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 they won it. I, I, that's why I didn't even stay because I knew they were going to win it. So and I was definitely shocked when they took down the Bears in the semifinals, though. I, I didn't see that one coming. I, I thought when Catholic high got by a car, I was like, okay, that's probably the state championship. And then I was like, they got River Ridge in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hey, sometimes the best team don't win it all the time. Hey, Brother Martin was able to find themselves in the state championship <laughs> game. And, of course, when you look at the record, it didn't indicate it, but the games have to be played. All right? Yeah. So let's get ready to take another break. We'll be right back with more of Chopping It Up with Kato. All right? Y'all stay tuned. Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kador, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are inside. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breath, we're more than a playground. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in that's a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. Have a passion? We've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. Hey, Coach, Coach Roger, Roger Kador here. There's, There's something about teamwork, teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When, when I need a toll, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. <laughs> 
Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in that's a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. All right, we are back with more Chopping It Up with Kadar. Of course, I'm Perry White. My man Roger Kadar is out of the country today dealing with he's working, doing his humanitarian work, working on a clinic. And, of course, if you're able to hear my voice and you're watching this right now, click that little button right there at the bottom of this video. It says subscribe. It is free. You get a notification bell every time we go live. You get an opportunity to go back and be able to check out any of our previous past shows. Uh, and of course, I'm joined today with my man, Dr. Anthony Graham Jr. What's so funny, man? I got to put some respect on it. You worked hard for that. I was there for the graduation when they said Dr. Anthony Graham. I said, that's my boy. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, because you got you to gotta let it set in. See, yeah. when you get old enough now, you're going to be like, you need, you better call me doctor. You got to let that resonate. You're still young right now. Yeah. By the time you're in your 40s and your 50s, you're going to feel yeah, disrespected. Yeah, 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 oh, man, you're going to feel disrespected if don't nobody put that PhD to your name. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about it. We talked about high school sports. I want to thank Ronna Gray for coming in uh, today. Man, I always love having the conversations with her. But we're getting close to... The bowl games, we're getting close to the NFL playoffs. Now, you of Pittsburgh still a fan. That's right. All right. What do you, what do you, when you look at the NFL this year, and as we're getting close to the playoffs, of course, I think you got to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Right now, so many people – and this is – I want to have this conversation because I get so tired of this when you start to talk about the quarterback position at the NFL. And you know how I feel about the quarterback, particularly oh, yeah. the dual threat position, what – I believe the game is evolving to, and it is unfolding in front of my very eyes, of which I've always talked about. When you look at evaluating black quarterbacks, it's always been that they can't process the game well. The game, uh, when you talk about reading defense and being able to go out and learn these complicated defense, excuse me, complicated offense, they've always put the position as though the African-American quarterbacks should maybe – Look at being an athlete should change his position to a quarterback or wherever else. We saw the same thing with the evaluation of Lamar Jackson. Lamar came in and showed that he is a talented quarterback. You saw the same thing with Jalen Hurts coming in, coming into the league. No, he is a quarterback. And now you look at these guys. You saw even with Cam Newton when he came into the league. Michael Vick was one of those guys back in there. Of course, my favorite athlete of all time. I just want to put that out there. But. I've always been a guy that said eventually you're going to start to see the quarterback position and the color of the guys that are signal callers change, and you're starting to see it now when you look around the league, Graham. Yeah, I got to agree with you, man. Like, if you, I'm not saying every quarterback has to be a Michael Vick, a Lamar Jackson, but if you don't have at least some type of dual threat ability, that's probably going to hinder your offense. I mean, you look at it from the high school level, you're seeing more and more quarterbacks especially on the high school level, you normally going to put your best athlete at quarterback. The college level now, it used to be under center, drop back. Now you got guys carrying the ball 10 to 12 times a game, even in the NFL now. I mean, Jalen Hurts is probably potentially going to be the league MVP this year at the pace he's going, either him or maybe Justin Jefferson. Uh, but you look at Patrick Mahomes, you got to be able to extend plays. Uh, even Josh Allen. I mean, Josh I know he's, Allen. Not, he's not an African-American quarterback, but still. He just showed that the <laughs> dual threat. because dual it, threat. <laughs> it ain't often that you'll see uh, the white guys run the way yeah. that a Josh Allen. And even my man at uh, Cincinnati, Joe Burrow Joe got Burrow. wheels. Yeah, even he'll scramble and, and pick up a first down or they'll call, a, you know, two or three design quarterback runs for him because – you have to be able to at least keep the at least move the offense. I always tell my quarterbacks, hey, if you can run, 
I'm not going to ask you to run it 30 times a game, but sometimes you may have we may have to use your legs just to ex- just get a few first downs. Mm-hmm. And these defense like you look at the way these defenses are built now, you don't see the big 250 pound linebackers anymore. They're 225 now. These defensive ends, you got guys that are running 45, 44 that are 270 playing defensive end now. So you can't be a statue back there anymore. Uh and, Tom, it, and and even with the the life expectancy of the running backs today, the exactly. life expectancy is short. I give you three years tops at, at the running back position in the NFL. Yeah, I mean because or and I, I think what you're seeing now, teams are instead of having that one bell cow running back, teams are playing three running backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to the SEC championship and I saw Georgia. They had three different running backs playing. Like each one of them had maybe ten to twelve carries. And I think that's why they were so fresh because it's like you're not beat down. Instead of you having 200 carries at the end of the season, maybe you have 100. And that saves a lot of wear and tear on you because as a running back, you're getting hit on blocking, you know, when you're blocking. Uh, if you're carrying out a fake, they're still the defense is still taught to tackle you regardless. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like you got to, you know, spread those carries out. Let me ask you this right now. When you look at the NFL, who's your favorite of, if you see a team that could possibly win it all? I got three of them. Philadelphia, because they can run the ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, a running back quarterback, but they still got a solid passing game too with AJ Brown, uh, Buffalo bills, Josh Allen, same thing. They can, he can run it. They got a solid running back. They got digs out there receiver and they got a solid defense. And uh, Kansas City. Yeah. Can't never count Patty, Patty Mia, Patty Mahomes. And a dark horse, mm-hmm. even though they did just get an injury at the quarterback position, the 49ers. Mm. Sock, great defense, great special teams, and they have a great running game too. I hate Debo Samuel just got banged up, so that's why I kind of didn't put them in the top, but they're like a dark horse. If they're healthy – you can't count the 49ers out. And let's look over at college football. Of course, it is bowl season. You're going to see a lot of guys uh, probably sit out because they're looking at declaring for the draft. And so you're going to probably see a lot of guys that you haven't heard of building your rosters up for next year. And especially when you talk about the transfer portal, the way it's opened up. But when you look at the college football playoffs right now, what are your teams? TCU, Ohio State, Georgia, and I'm forgetting somebody, Michigan. Michigan. When you look at that playoff, man, how you got that uh, rounding itself out? No Alabama, no Clemson. So, for once, you got to really look at it. And, and, uh, and, you know, always TCU seems to be that team before it was Cincinnati. Years ago, we saw Washington. If it's typically not out of the Big Ten or the SEC, it's kind of like, well, that's your dark horse. But yeah. TCU being in there, TCU ain't losing in this conference championship, but nonetheless got into it. When you, how you see that thing panning out? I think I'm, I'm going to take Michigan over TCU. Okay. And the reason I say that, Michigan is built more like an NFL-style team, and TCU is built more like, you know, like a college Big 12 team. And I just don't think they're going to be able to match up in the interior. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be able to run the ball, and they're going to probably it'll be TCU. And then Georgia and Ohio State, now this is going to be the most It's a good matchup, ain't it? It's a good matchup because this is a team that has the receivers and a quarterback that can really test that Georgia defense. But in the end, I'm still going to lean Georgia. I mean, Georgia, I saw them play in person. They got a complete team. You were impressed with the Bulldogs, weren't you? I, I really was. Yeah. I really was. That was a big physical team. I mean, defensively at all three levels, they got playmakers. Offensively, they got the best tight end room in the country. They got a great offensive line, three running backs. Uh, so, I mean, they're a solid team. I, I look for Georgia to beat Ohio State in the good one. Georgia and Michigan meet up. Come on now. Who you got? And, SEC? Uh, I'm going to take Georgia and a good one over <laughs> Michigan. And all right, and then let's take it here. You got Georgia. Uh, now, Celebration Bowl, of course. We talked about HBCU football. Coach Deion Sanders is leaving to go to Colorado. But before he goes, he said he has unfinished business, and he wants to finish that business at Jackson State. They take on North Carolina Central. Of course, Jackson State won the SWAC beating Southern uh, 42-24, to 43-24. And then North Carolina Central, they don't play a conference championship, but they won their conference of the MEAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, outright. They'll be taking on Jackson State uh, in the Celebration Bowl. Trey Oliver, the, the, the head coach at North Carolina Central, former defensive coordinator at Southern. And when he was at Southern, he had that defense one of the best in the nation. When you look at this with North Carolina Central, Jackson State, Jackson lost last year to Coach Buddy Pugh in South Carolina State, a game that a lot of people thought 
Jackson would have won, but when you look at this matchup, what you got between North Carolina Central and Jackson State? Well, if Dion wasn't leaving and it wasn't all these distractions, I would have said Jackson State by probably three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. But with all the distractions and everything going on, I'm still picking Jackson State, but I'm going to say maybe by a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Because I still think from just a talent standpoint, they're better than North Carolina Central. I've I've watched North Carolina Central play. They got a good quarterback, big kid. But I'm still going to take Jackson State. Something like 31 to 21, something like that. Mm, it take a lot to score on that Jackson State defense, man. Of course, they're going to have – They did get exposed in the SWAC championship a little bit with uh, McDaniel, Bubba yeah. McDaniel coming in the game. And, I mean, North Carolina Central's quarterback is bigger and probably a little bit better runner than McDaniel. So The problem they, is they're going to have film on him, so they're going to know what he's doing. That is true. They game planning for him. Yeah, bro. they didn't know what Bubba McDaniel was coming. They was like, who the hell is this guy? Why is he doing that to us? You know, so. But, Graham, man, we come to the end of the show, man. I want to thank you for joining me today, oh, man. Thank you for having me. I definitely got to get you back. I want to thank Runner Gray for coming in today and joining us as well. And my man, Coach Kadar, he'll be back next week, as I say. As I, you know, he's a humanitarian. He's down in Panama coaching up a clinic, getting the next generation uh, ready for some baseball here in America. All right. And, of course, always, I'm Perry White, a.k.a. PJ. And be sure to hit that subscribe button right there underneath that. Get that notification every time we go live. We'll be back next week on Monday, all right? So y'all stay tuned. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. More of Chopping It Up with Kadar. Catch y'all later. Coach Kadar say. <laughs>